morning. We thank you, Lord, for your favor. You favored us, and you are still favoring us. We rejoice in you. We bless you. We exalt you, our King. We return all the praise to you. We return all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration to you. We ask as we come into your presence this morning, you will speak to us. You will bless our soul. You will strengthen us. Your word will come like fire. It will consume impurities out of our life. It will come like hammer. It will break every hardness of fat. It will come like a sword. And Lord, it will heal us. It will heal us. It will heal us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be thy name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And the people of God shout a big. Amen. Don't sit down yet. We want to read that Bible. Choir, thank you so much. God bless you. Continue to enjoy the favor of this great, great God. We are reading a fairly long passage. Just as we read at the first service. We are reading again from the book of Matthew chapter 18. But this time around, we are starting from verse 15. We are adding more to it. The Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. So, let's read. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if we will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an eden man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on that as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which will take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an ordained prince, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wrought, and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Baba, we ask this morning, any one of us, any one of us, any one of us in this house who is guilty, like this unforgiving servant that is holding men in prison of his heart and whom you have given up to torment us, we ask this morning for mercy. 
let your word come. Let it in such. Let it deliver such from the destruction of tormentors. Let such repent and let such be brought out of prison to reign. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Please can we be seated this morning? I want to appreciate God for his faithfulness unto us and I want to appreciate the lead pastor, Reverend Yemi Grace Manadulojo, for giving me the opportunity to stand before you this morning to share on our topic, on our theme for the month, which is I forgive. This morning, by God's grace, I'm going to be sharing what I titled Benefits of Forgiveness. So I'm not going to spend time defining what forgiveness is or, or going into any other introduction. I will just stay and build on all the introductions that every other minister has given unto us about this topic. All the definition they have given us about forgiveness, I adopted this morning. And we are just going to go straight and look at why God asks us to forgive. And then we'll look at benefits of forgiveness. Once again, I welcome you to church this morning. And I welcome all our online viewers. And on behalf of the lead pastor, Reverend Yemi Grace Manaduluju, who is unavoidably absent, but on a mission um, assignment, I greet every one of you and I welcome you to church this morning. You are welcome and God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Why did God give the commandment to forgive? From that scripture that we read in Matthew 18, God says, the Bible says, if we do not forgive, God cannot forgive us. That's the number one reason. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. When the Lord Jesus Christ was teaching us the Lord's prayer, the prayer that we recite on a daily basis, in verse 14 and 15, he said, For if ye forgive men, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Why? Because on a daily basis, when we recite the Lord's Prayer, we keep saying, forgive us as debts, as we forgive those who sin against us. And now the Lord Jesus says, God will only forgive when we forgive. If we fail to forgive, he will not forgive. Mark eleven twenty six. 26, the Bible says, but if you do not forgive, neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And what happens when your sins are not forgiven? When your sins are not forgiven, you remain a sinner before God. And as a sinner before God, the Bible told, the Bible told us, I read in my Bible, it says that anybody who is a sinner, God does not hear them. Can you see how it works? God says, forgive. If you fail to forgive, he will not forgive you. And if he did not forgive you, it means you remain a sinner. And as a sinner in John 9, 31. John 9, 31, the Bible says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So it is very important for us to forgive because if you don't forgive men their sin, God will not forgive you your sin. You remain a sinner and God will not hear you. The next reason why God asks us to forgive. It's in that scripture that we read, Matthew 18, from verse 15 to 17. When we forgive, we gain our brother and we do not have enemies. When we forgive, we gain our brother, we gain our sister. That person that wronged you, that person that offended you, that person that hurt you, that person that created a situation or circumstance that gave you pain and you are not seeing the pain and you are medicating it with unforgiveness. If you forgive the person, the Bible says you have been able to win him. Now, look at the way the Bible says we should win the person. Verse 15. It says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, 
He's the one that trespasses against thee. Now, you are the one the Bible is telling to go and tell him his fault. And he says, between you and him alone. Between you and him alone. You know, as um, the um, pastor that ministered at the first service was ministering, and he was talking about um, that song that says, I couldn't turn it, I don't deserve it. Uh, God left the 99, he came looking for me. That's the way God wants us to do. He wants us to go looking for that brother that sinned against us to win him. And he said, if I try on my own and I couldn't win him, then I should call another brother and another sister that I know he respects and he will listen to so that we'll go together to win him. And the Bible says, if he will not listen to us, then we should report him to the church. We report him to our pastor. We report him to the priest so that at least he will respect the anointing. He will respect the man of God. Now, God has given us so much assignment about forgiveness, so much for us to do so that we can get to that point in which we we'll forgive me. And the reason is just because he expects us that we carry his DNA. If you are truly a child of God, if you are truly born of God, if you are born again, tr truly tongue-talking, spirit-filled, you have the spirit of God in you, you have the DNA of Jesus in you, then it shouldn't be difficult for you to do this. Because himself, he went looking for you to bring you home to himself. So he wants you to go looking for your brother, looking for your sister, to bring your sister back, to get reconciled, and have no enemy. Third reason, our time is fast spent, I need to be very fast. Third reason, it says, third reason is that whatever we bind on earth remains bound in heaven. And whatever we lose on earth remains loosed in heaven. Matthew 18, 18. I love the way the ERV version puts it. The easy to read version of the Bible. I love the way he puts it. He says, I can assure you that when you speak judgment here or not, it will be God's judgment. And when you promise forgiveness here or not, it will be God's forgiveness. You see, when I read that ERV, the easy to read version, I paused. And I was like, come to think of it. If you were to be to stop at if you pass judgment, yeah? it says, I can assure you. Media, if you have the ERV, please put it up so that brethren can see. The ERV says, I can assure you that when you speak judgment, here or not, if it has stopped on that judgment, it says it will be God's judgment. If it has stopped on that judgment, then happy, all of us will be like, yes, I can judge. When I speak judgment, it is judged in heaven whatsoever I bind on that, that's the way King James Version put it. He said, whatever you bind on that is bind in heaven. So anybody that I decree judgment on, there is judgment on that person. If I say, the Lord rebuke you, heaven rebukes you. Abby, that is it. If it has stopped on that, it would have been good. But he now went further and he says, and when you promise forgiveness here or not, it will be God's forgiveness. Meaning that no matter how big, no matter how, um, I don't know, how big the sin could look like that anybody has sinned against you. The Bible says if you promise forgiveness to that person, heaven will also forgive the person. So it means that for as long as you are holding a person guilty in your heart, Heaven we also owe the person guilty. That's what the Bible says. And for as long as you decided to release the person and to let go of the person, heaven we also let go of the person. How do I mean? See the next reason why we must forgive. The next reason why we must forgive says the prayer of that offender that you refuse to release 
his prayer will not be heard by God. Why? Because heaven has not forgiven him. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5 verse 23 and 24. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Now, this is talking about that offender that you refuse to promise forgiveness. You are there on this side, holding that offender, not promising him forgiveness. The offender is on the other side. In fact, some may not even know. But for those offenders that knows that I offended Sister B and she has not promised me forgiveness, she has not forgiven me. Oh, I greeted Sister B, she didn't answer me. It means she has some grudge against me. It means she has not promised me forgiveness. She has not forgiven me. For such offender, God said to such offender to leave his gift at the altar. Don't even pray. Kukuma pray. Leave your gift at the altar. Go and look for that person that you know have something against you so that you can settle with that person. I love the way the message Bible puts it. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Message Bible. Please, can we read it in the Message Bible? The Message Bible says, this is how I want you to conduct yourself in these matters. If you enter your place of worship and about to make an offering, you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you. You remember a, oh, a grudge a friend has against you. Abandon your offering. Leave immediately. Go to this friend and make things right. Then and only then, come back and work things out with God. That is why it is very important for us to forgive. Because the man you have not forgiven, God will not hear his prayer. You too that refuse to forgive, God will not hear your prayer. And I can assure you that it is because of this that we don't see the power of God again in the church. She offends me. I refuse to let go. He offends me. I refuse to let go. And they are like that. Pockets and pockets and pockets and pockets and pockets of them. And then we come together to the holy place. And we come to pray. And God opened the windows of heaven and looked down. And he seen all manners of offenders. And the offended. Who had not released the offender. The offender who has not taken it upon himself or herself to go and look for the person he or she offended to say, I am sorry, forgive me my sin. So that by the time I present myself before God, God can hear me. This is the reason why God does not hear us. This is the reason why nowadays in churches, we don't see the power of God. Like I said before. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. How do I mean? If you look at Matthew 18. Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Matthew 18, 18 to 20. That same passage that we read. I'm just trying to establish what we are talking about here today. It says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Verse 19. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on that as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. And 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now God is saying that whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. The person you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. The person you refuse to lose on earth is not loosed in heaven. Now, people that were not loosed are gathering together. People that did not lose people are gathering together. Now, in their gathering together, will God be there? He won't be there. That's why we don't see the power of God. I just love the way the, the Bible was putting the scriptures one after the other. 
Sometimes we dissociate them. We pick the one that applies to us and we use it. We don't read them together in the same context. But looking at them together in the same context this morning, I believe as a church, we'll see the reason why we don't experience the power of God in our gathering. Because we are gatherings of offenders and offended that refuse to let go of the, offend, of the offender. And offenders that refuse to go to the offender to say, I am sorry. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Why is it that God said we should forgive? Because God does not want you to take revenge. God asks us to forgive because he doesn't want us to take revenge. Let's see Romans 12, 17 and 18. The Bible says, We compare to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. God said he does not want us to recompense evil back. So if you are not going to recompense evil, then the next thing you do is to forgive. Because we have been told that forgiveness is when we let go of a hurt or, or a wrong that was done against us. When we let go. And when we refuse to lay claim. When we refuse to lay claim to any redress of that particular thing that was done to us. Now, God says we should not recompense evil for evil, but we should provide things that are honest in the sight of all men. And he said, if it be possible, as much as lie in us, we should live peaceably with all men. I greet her, she did not greet me. I will go and meet her, and I will remind her scriptures, and I will beg her, sister, please, if not for my sake, for your sake. If not for your sake, for the sake of the saints, the congregation of the children of God, where we worship together, please forgive me. And I know there is no way that she will not forgive. Because if she refused to forgive, the Bible says in that Matthew um, 18, I think 17 or 18 or 19 there, it says, we leave him and treat him like a publican, like an edging person. So, for as long as she's one of us, she's a Christian, a child of God, a true child of God, she will definitely forgive. Another reason why God says we must forgive is because vengeance belongs to God. Vengeance belongs to him. He's the one that should avenge us. You know, the reason why we don't forgive is because we want to take revenge. And a lot of people, until they take revenge, they won't have peace until they take revenge. But God says not to take revenge, but to forgive. He said, because vengeance belongs to him. Romans 12, 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, see the Lord. And the Bible says, therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, Thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I love that last um, um, verse. It's telling us that we need to forgive so that we don't get overcome with evil, but we overcome evil with good. And while I was studying and looking at this, I realized that the sweetest revenge that you can get from anybody that hurts you, or that is standing on your way, or that is not allowing you to progress, the sweetest revenge you can get from that person is not for that person to fall down and die and be removed from the way, but for God to catapult you over and above the person, and for the person to be looking at you ahead and see that, oh, the person I was standing in the way that I didn't want to go had actually bypassed me. That's the sweetest revenge you can get. So, if you want that sweet revenge, the Bible says, leave it to God. And that reminds me of something that happened to me sometimes in 2011. No, not 2011, 2009, 2010. I went somewhere asking for a job. Did I go asking for the job? No. Somebody gave me a job in a particular institution. I did the job. And another person saw the job and was like, who did this? And the person says, so and so, give me a number. And the man called me. 
the landlord of that institution, he called me. And he said, you did so-so and so at so-so and so street. I said, yes, sir. He said, I want you to do another for me. That one was just one BQ. Now I'm going to give you six BQs. You will do them for me and refurbish them and remodel them like that one. I said, thank you, sir. I was so happy. It will be my first breakthrough in business. And I put all my energy and everything that I need into it. And then they called me for presentation and I presented. And when it was time for me to get money, they keep calling me for meetings upon meetings and the meeting never held. And then one day I went again. They called me for meeting. And the secretary of that Ogapatapata called me and said, Madam, do you know architect so and so? I said, Yes, Mama Yoga. I know. I know. And he said, Go and beg. Go and beg that architect. It is that architect that is saying they should not give you this job. If not, they're supposed to have given you money. This job ought to have been completed by now. And I felt bad. Because this was one of the people that I so much trusted that I would report everything that is happening to me too. And this person said, because I did not report that I got a job in that place. And this person said, I am the architect that has the retainership in that place. You should have reported to me that you got a job. Well, anyway, um, she was saying, this person was saying this after many years that the deed has been done. But do you know what happened was, I hated that person for that. I had resentment against the person for that. And I decided to just cut myself off the person. And then one day we went for a program, a NIVG. And lo and behold, it was this person that was ministering. I couldn't pray. I just couldn't pray. I was there crying. I was just crying. I was like, God, how can I pray with this person in front of me, leading prayer? And as I was crying, God said, it's time for you to be healed. Release. Oh, yeah, release. Release this offender and let it go. And that night, I got my deliverance. I released the offender and me too, I was released. Because when you say you are holding somebody, the prisoner and the jailer, they are together in the prison. So I was released. Now, you see, <laughs> the beautiful thing thereafter was that in that same establishment, without me going to ask them for a job, I sit down gradually for my house in 2010. They called me and they were giving me jobs, giving me jobs, giving me jobs, giving me jobs, giving me jobs. That is God avenging. So don't avenge yourself. Allow God to avenge you. The, the, revenge, the, the revenge is always sweet when it comes from God. So allow him to avenge you. Another reason why we, God says we must forgive is because we stand the chance of losing relationship with God and ultimately eternity in Christ. Let's see um, Matthew 18, 34 and 35. Matthew 18, 34 and 35, please. Matthew 18, 35 and 35. The Bible says, And his Lord was wrought and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother, their trespasses. We read in the Bible the story of Joseph. We all understand that Potiphar loved Joseph. And Potiphar delivered him to the hands of Joseph everything that he had. But the day that Potiphar sent Joseph into prison, Joseph was no longer able to stand before Potiphar. I just bring that story for you to understand what that verse 34 is saying. That if you fail to forgive your brother, you too, you are entering into prison. And this prison now, it is God that is sending you there. And he's not just sending you alone, he's sending you, putting you in the hand of tormentors. As Somali said it in the first, in, uh, first service, that putting you in the hand of tormentors, it means you will be oppressed. Things will not work again. Everything will be one kind, one kind. So as I was studying, I was like, eh? Then it means in those days when we can't trace God. Instead of us looking for God from every mountain, what we should do is to withdraw and put the searchlight on ourselves to see whether we are not holding somebody in our heart 
whether it is not that God has thrown us into the prison and given us to the tormentors, and now we can't see his face. He can't hear us anymore. We can't hear him. We can't receive from him. We are being tormented. May we not be tormented in Jesus' name. And ultimately, if a man remains in such a state, what it means is that that man will never see the face of God. He will miss heaven. And that reminds me of a, or a film, a Manzion film that I watched. A G.O., a man of God, G.O., general of Asia. One of his pastors broke away and he did not forgive the pastor. And the pastor, because the G.O. did not forgive him, scripture came to play. His things were not working. And then one of the children was sick, sick to death. And that particular um, day that the child was in the hospital, almost dying, he was able to run back to the G.O. and was asking the G.O. for mercy. He, he would not have met the G.O. at home because the G.O. wanted to go on a um, min, uh, ministration with the wife. But on the way, he felt sick, so he returned home. And when he returned home, somebody came to start telling him, reporting um, the success of the ministry. And immediately that person finished. That was when this other pastor came. I believe God was creating an atmosphere for the G.O. to forgive this person. That was why they came to tell him of the successes of his ministry, despite this other pastor that broke away with his church members. And then this pastor came in and was begging Gio, sir, please forgive me, forgive me. I know I have done something wrong. In fact, God is not hearing me. I can't hear God. My child is sick now. And the Gio refused to forgive. Oh. He refused to forgive until the child of that pastor died and they called the pastor and they said, your child has died. And the moment the pastor received the phone call that your child has died, G.O. too just, bam. He too died. He died immediately. That kind of a G.O. Do you think he will go to heaven? In fact, in that Mosiah ministry, they showed him in there. Don't miss heaven. Don't miss eternity with Christ. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Hey, my time is fast spent. Quickly before we go, benefits of forgiveness. Why is God sending us this message of forgiveness in this very month of July? I believe God is preparing us for great things in this second half of the year. Now God is sending us this message asking us to forgive so that we can come out of every prison that we have sent ourselves into because of unforgiveness. And also to help our brothers too to come out of every prison. So that that scripture, it comes out of prison to reign, can be fulfilled in our lives. Remember the man that that scripture was written about, Joseph, he forgave his brother. He didn't just come out of prison to reign. He come out of prison to reign because he forgave. So, the first benefit of it is that we come out of prison. The second benefit is that we may be fruitful. There is fruitfulness in forgiveness. There is truthfulness in forgiveness. Genesis 41, 51 to 52. The Bible says, And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said he, hath made me forget all my toy and all my father's house. And the name of the second called the Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Fruitfulness will come when we forgive. When Joseph forgave his brother, his fruitfulness came. Sincerely, I sat down and I tried to analyze the story of Joseph again. And I was like, sincerely speaking, when God sent Joseph to the house of Potiphar, Joseph was very close to the government's house in Egypt. He could from Potiphar's house get to the throne. But perhaps he didn't forgive his brother. Then they sent him to prison. I understand that better when I watched the film about why if I watched it. That guy, Martin Durosonia, when he refused to forgive his father, he sent him to prison again. Please forgive, so that he won't send you to prison again. And when Joseph forgave, what happened? There was fruitfulness. We shall be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. We will forgive and we will enjoy the benefits of forgiveness, which is fruitfulness. Another benefit of forgiveness is that we might be healed that we might be held. Psalm 107 verse 20. 
The Bible says he sent his sword and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. And God is sending his sword to us in this month of July in Lighthouse International Christian Center that we might be healed, that we might be delivered from our destruction, that we might release our brother, release our sister, release whoever it is that hurt us, and so that God can bring us out of every prison and deliver us from the hand of every tormentor and every oppressor that he has released us to, that we might be healed and be delivered from our destruction. And I see the story of Abimelech and Abraham in Genesis chapter 20, how when Abraham prayed for Abimelech, Abimelech and his household, they were healed and they were able to give back again. I know that some of us will be like, ah, there was no place there where they say Abraham resented Abimelech or anything. Baba God, God resent Abimelech. It was God himself that stood against him. And until there was forgiveness, until he was paid for, there was no healing. So benefit of forgiveness, healing comes. When we forgive, we are healed. And be, we, because we all know that there are many um, health benefits of forgiveness, so it brings us healing. The Lord will help us as we forgive and as we get our healing in Jesus' name. Another benefit of forgiveness is that we are helped to take our blessing. Look at the, the um, brothers of Joseph. The brothers of Joseph, when Joseph saw them in Egypt, he could decide to pretend that he didn't know them. He could decide to continue to play the drama of punishing them and giving them food and sending them away and never reconcile with them. But he reconciled with them because he forgave them. So forgiveness brings reconciliation. Forgiveness allows us to be able to reconcile back to that person that hurt us or that has done something wrong to us. And what reconciliation does is that it now opens us up to the blessings that we should take. Look at the brothers of Joseph. If Joseph decided to only sell food to them and send them back, they will be coming from Canaan to Egypt. From Canaan to Egypt all the time to buy food and go back, to buy food and go back. Perhaps some, sometimes somebody will die on the way. Perhaps sometimes they will fall in the hands of armed robbers. Anything can happen to them. But because Joseph forgave them, they were able to take the blessing that God prepared for them in Egypt. And he said, go and bring my father and bring your family and bring everybody. And they were able to take that blessing. And when I was studying, one thing that the Lord made me to understand is that apart from the blessings that he, God, we bless us with when we forgive, he said, there is a blessing in the hand of the offender and a blessing in the hand of the offended that must be shared that must be exchanged that must be enjoyed but when you refuse to forgive unko you can't assess it maybe the person you refuse to forgive since all these days has the key to the solution that you are looking for all this way please forgive i can tell you my story one day i was there in church seated there and one pastor was talking now <laughs> it was a direct message to me. And the man would go say, so that person hurt you and you didn't forgive? Okay. You got annoyed about it? Oh, oh, oh. God said you are proud. Go back and meet him. Go back and meet him. Sincerely, I believe the word was meant for me. And I went back to meet the person and the issue was sorted out that very week. So, it helps us to take our blessing when we forgive. Okay, I've mentioned that another benefit of um, forgiveness is reconciliation. I don't have time to talk about steps to forgiveness. I don't have time to talk about steps to forgiveness. It was said, so much was said about steps to, to forgiveness in the first service. But permit me to remind you that this God that asks you to forgive, hmm, this God that asks you to forgive, you, if you are truly born of him, then you must be able to forgive. I have been there before, finding it difficult to forgive. I felt what this person did to me is irreparable. Very, very irreparable. Oh, where will I get it again? It's gone and gone forever. Irreparable, and I couldn't forgive the person. And each time I hear stories, I, I hear someone rather in the church about forgiveness. I will cry, 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 cry. And I will say, God, I forgive. And I will go. And the next minute I see the person. 
I'll, the anger, the bitterness, everything will swell up in me again. And I will realize I have not been able to forgive. And I was like that for many years. Until one day, that reminds me, when Pastor Wale said we should go to our pastor to pray for us, it's not pastor that will pray for you. So I'm sorry, it's not pastor. It is you that will deliver yourself like a rope from the hand of the hunter called unforgiveness. It's you that will deliver yourself. One day, and I went to a pastor. I said, pastor, please pray for me. That this person, I find it difficult to forgive. Trust this pastor now. He said, forgiveness is an attribute of God. Go to God and sort it out with God. And you will find out that you will be able to forgive this person. So I went to God. And I went to tell God about it. I re-asked everything, everything, the way it happened, I told God. And I asked God that, God, please give me grace to be able to forgive this person. And then I was made to understand that when God forgave me all my own sins, was it that my sins were so small, very little, that I can just forget about it? Or, okay, don't let's talk about me. Maybe because I was born into the church and I grew up as a church girl, um, See me, Opo. Let's look at those armed robbers outside, those witches and wizards that has killed people, that has taken so many lives. And yet, the day they will come to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I want to give my life to Jesus now. We're going to forgive them. So if he can forgive them, does it mean he does not pay him? Does it mean he does not pay God those lives they wasted? Does it mean he does not pay God maybe one of the lives they wasted? are the deliverers that we've been looking for in Nigeria. And the people of God are still being pained and going through all manners. Does it mean he doesn't pain God? It pains him. But despite the pain, the pain, he forgives. And if you truly are a child of God, then put yourself in that position. See yourself as a true child of God. See yourself as somebody that carries the DNA of heaven and find it in your heart to forgive. One step that I took then was that I started buying gifts for that person. I started praying for the person. I started buying gifts for the person. And as time goes on, I was able to forgive and forget. Can we rise up on our feet? We want to pray. The Lord will help us this morning. The Lord will help us to be able to forgive. The Lord will help us to be able to let go. Can we lift up our voice unto God this morning and cry out unto him and tell him that, Father, we receive healing. We receive healing this morning. We receive healing from every kind of hurt, from every kind of pain. We receive healing from every situation and circumstance that we find so difficult to let go of. This morning, Lord, we receive healing in the name of Jesus. Can we lift up our voice and cry out unto God for healing this morning? Yes, Father, we receive healing this morning. Yes, Lord, we receive healing this morning. We receive healing this morning. We receive healing. We receive healing. We receive healing. We receive healing, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive healing. We receive healing. We receive grace for that sister to drop that load at your feet this morning. We receive grace for that brother to drop Drop that load at your feet this morning. We receive grace for us to be healed from every odds. Lord, we receive grace this morning. We receive grace for healing and we receive grace to let go. We receive grace to let go. We receive grace to let go. We receive grace. We receive grace. We receive grace. We receive grace. We receive grace, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we are sorry, oh, Lord, of, in, of every way that we have hindered the move of you, the living God, in our midst because of unfortunate forgiveness but this morning Lord we receive grace 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 Lord in Jesus mighty name we have prayed we are still praying I want us to act to tell God that father we receive the spirit of forgiveness we ask oh Lord that you will banish the spirit of resentment and unforgiveness from our hearts as individual and from our midst as a church in the name of Jesus can we pray that prayer can we tell God, Father, let's say it together. Father, we receive the spirit of forgiveness and we banish the spirit of resentment from our hearts as individual and as a church 
in the name of Jesus. Can we make it a prayer now? Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this morning, we receive the spirit of forgiveness. We banish the spirit of resentment. We banish the spirit of unforgiveness. We banish it in our hearts and we banish it in our midst as a church in the mighty name of Jesus. Lima kabore moskibo liba kabore mosontolipo jike kekeke liba kabore mosontolipo jima kibora moskibo liba kabore mosontolipo jike kekeke liba kibora mosontolipo rima kabore moskibo liba kibore mosontolipo jima kabora moskibo liba kibore mosontolipo jike kekeke liba kabore mosontolipo jima kibora moskibo liba kabore mosontolipo Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. From that Matthew 18 that we read, we were made to understand that whatever we bind on earth remains bound in heaven. And whatever we lose on earth remains loosed in heaven. So for the many offenders that we banned this morning, we are telling God that we are sorry. We are telling God that we release them. And we are telling God that the church that the presence of God will no longer be hindered in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember what he said? He said, when two of you agree together and you pray, he said, I will answer. He said, why? Because I am in the midst of you. So can we lift up our voice and pray this morning and say, as a church, we confess that the presence of God and his power will not be hindered in our gatherings anymore. In the name of Jesus, yes, Father, because we be, because we believe, because we forgive, because we release everyone that is offending us, because the offended are releasing the offender, because the offender are getting forgiveness in our midst this morning. We confess as a church that your presence and your power will no longer be hindered in our midst. In the mighty name of Jesus, when we gather together, Lord, you will hear us as a church. You you will hear us as a people you will hear us as individual you will hear us in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name we have prayed